There's a new drug on the market, and it is becoming a hit among celebrities. While all drugs can be lethal, this one is especially poisonous. Why? Because it's a venom, snake's venom. Well, it's not exactly new, but it has come under the spotlight because of a certain Indian influencer with millions of followers. His name is Elvish Yadav. He's been arrested for allegedly supplying the drug to a rape and he's just one of many names involved. The snake venom circuit runs much bigger and deeper. Snake bites. Dragon drops. K72 and 76. Snake's venom. It goes by many names. It can give your euphoria, a head rush, alter your state of consciousness enhance your sex drive, but it can also give you an unbeatable addiction. So do not feel tempted, it's worse than other drugs, because its high lasts not only for a few hours, but days, despite the adverse effects. It's all the rage in rave parties, especially in India. Ravers are spending nights on reptiles, High on snake venom, they dance from dawn until dusk. One such party was raided by police in India's national capital region. Guess what they found? A plastic bottle filled with 20 milliliters of snake venom. Five cobras, one python, two-headed snakes and a rat snake. Yes, this rager in Noida had live snakes. Where did they come from? It is yet to be known. But we know who supplied it. It was an Indian YouTuber and influencer named Elvish Yadav. Despite being embroiled in controversies, this man enjoys a following of millions of people. He has been arrested along with five other men. All of them have admitted that they supplied snake venom at rave parties allegedly organized by Elvish Yadav. How did they come under the scanner? Well, they fell into a trap laid by the people for animal group. The members of this group called Yadav as customers, asking him to arrange snake venom for a party. Yadav took the bait and now he is in judicial custody for 14 days. The whole incident has brought to light the snake venom circuit. Who would have thought people will be abusing snake poison and harming animals along the way? There are so many questions. How is the venom extracted? How is it used? What does it do once it enters the body? What are the risks? There are bound to be some. Also, what is its economy? Is it helping dealers make a lot of money? Let us answer some of these questions for you. Extracting snake venom is a tedious task, not to forget a dangerous and cruel one as well. Snakes store only so much venom, so if the police found 20 milliliters of it in a party, that means many snakes were tortured or even killed in the process. What snake keepers also do is inject the reptiles with chemicals to increase their venom production. The task of coaxing out the venom is usually left to snake charmers. Once the snake spits out its venom, it is stored and sold off or used. To make the process safer for the snake handlers, the poor reptiles are often starved or have their teeth yanked off. This is one way to go about it. The other way is more dangerous. Whoever wants to take the venom holds the snake by its head and then it slaps it sharply with an object to make it bite. Sounds bizarre, doesn't it? Who in the right mind would do something so harmful? Well, people do and they end up getting addicted. Once the venom enters the user's bloodstream, it releases serotonin and peptides which sedate the person. It induces a feeling of tranquility and euphoria. These are the sensations usually associated with powerful opioids. So naturally, snake venom is highly addictive. Other potential risks include blurring of vision, internal bleeding and blood clotting. The most alarming thing is that there hasn't been enough research into the field. So we don't exactly know what we are dealing with. 
However, it continues to be a money-making machine, so the repercussions are often overlooked. In November 2022, the Border Security Force in India's West Bengal seized a jar containing 2.14 kilograms of snake venom. Just imagine how many snakes would have suffered for it. It was valued at rupees 17 crore in the international market. That is over $2 million. The consumer demand for snake venom seems to be increasing. How long before it turns into yet another drug epidemic? Bureau Report, we on World is One. All right, let's now get you some breaking news that has in fact just come in where the Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal has been arrested by the Enforcement Directorate in the Delhi liquor policy case. This is what is unfolding at this moment right in front of Arvind Kejriwal's residence where he was questioned for a period of about two hours. A 12-member team of the Enforcement Directorate had been questioning him and it has now arrested the Delhi Chief Minister at his residence in North Delhi's civil lines. The ED team had reached his residence and begun questioning after the Delhi High Court had refused to grant Arvind Kejriwal any protection from arrest in the excise policy case earlier in the day. Now, a lot of Aam Aadmi Party supporters, the Aam Aadmi Party is the party that Arvind Kejriwal had founded. The members of Aam Aadmi Party have been sloganeering in front of Kejriwal's residence. Section 144 has also been imposed. But this, of course, is the big breaking development of the moment where Arvind Kejriwal, the man who started his political journey, as an anti-corruption crusader who entered into politics with the intention of cleaning up India's politics has now been arrested by the Enforcement Directorate in an ex liquor excise policy case which has been described as a pretty big scam. And this, of course, is, is, is huge in terms of the ramifications that this is likely to have on politics, not just in Delhi, but indeed across India, especially given the fact that the Election Commission just last week announced the dates for the general elections. And this is a huge development. Arvind Kejriwal, the man who said that he wanted to clean up politics in India as an anti-corruption crusader. And a decade later, since he had sat on the dharna along with um, the IAC India Against Corruption, he has now been arrested by the Enforcement Directorate. And my colleague Siddhant is, of course, joining us with more details. Siddhant, this is huge. A sitting chief minister has now been arrested by the Enforcement Directorate. Well, Mohammed, this is uh, a political earthquake, to use the phrase, in many senses. Uh, uh, but this was a day, perhaps, uh, which was expected as well. Um, in the past, as well, the ED had issued summons. Uh, but now, of course, uh, literally, it's uh, political uh, news, biggest political news uh, here in India. In fact, uh, at the residence, we know several uh, political workers have been gathering. Uh, and essentially, you have pointed out that uh, how uh, there was uh, the uh, the hearing, and of course, uh, when it comes to that, um, uh, things did not go well uh, for Arvind Kejriwal, and that is why the arrest happened. But uh, essentially, uh, we are now looking also uh, towards two months of election campaigning and India goes to general election. Right. So how will it play in the entire scenario is something that will be closely um, awaited. We also know that uh, uh, the development came uh, when uh, around uh, 7 p.m. local time here in uh, Delhi. The ED teams reached Arvind Kejriwal's residence in North Delhi civil lines. Right. And uh, the Delhi High Court had refused to grant him protection from the action in the excise policy case and uh, this is the ninth time that the enforcement directorate uh, had summoned the KG wall. I right. can tell you right now we are getting forward with visuals of uh, the security deployment in front of KG wall's residence as uh, uh, the activists uh, continue to gather. In fact, Section 144 has been imposed by, uh, by, by the authorities. Uh, that is, they should not be gathering of air. Uh, uh, people there, more than four people. So essentially, security has been tightened. Section 144 has been imposed near Delhi CM's uh, residence, and it looks like it is going to uh, play out for next few days. We are now getting reactions as right. well, uh, coming from not only his party, but other political parties as well. Absolutely, indeed, Siddhant. As you put it, this is a political earthquake that has happened. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal, the sitting Chief Minister, has of course been 
arrested by the Enforcement Directorate in the liquor policy case. And what also needs to be pointed out is that his case will be heard by the Supreme Court tomorrow. So there is no relief that Arvind Kejriwal can hope tonight. This case will, of course, be heard tomorrow. This is what is... Uh, Team Kejriwal will approach the Supreme Court. There is no hearing tonight is the latest bit of information on the legal aspect of this case. And to give us a sense of what's happening on the ground, I have my colleague Dharamjot Kaur, who's joining us over the phone line. Dharamjot, this is as big as it gets politically. Uh, Amadmi Party will say that this is essentially a political witch hunt. Section 144 has been imposed. Give us a sense of what's happening on the ground at this moment. Well, there is uh, a great sense of uh, turmoil and a lot of, uh, you know, activity happening near the CM's residence right now, Saleh. Um, as you did point out, uh, the police forces and Delhi security personnel have imposed Section 144. But in spite of that, there are a lot of party workers, a lot of supporters of the Aam Aadmi Party who are now gathering in large numbers uh, to protest the Delhi Chief Minister's arrest. Now, in the legal front, you already mentioned that there will be uh, no development overnight in terms of how the case proceeds, even though the Aam Aadmi Party has said that they will be taking the case to uh, the Supreme Court tomorrow. Uh, but a lot of uncertainty in terms of uh, how the how the political stability and the civil stability around Delhi will form overnight. Uh, we also saw some security personnel arresting a lot of party workers and supporters. There are also hundreds of people now on a sit-down outside the Delhi Chief Minister's house. So a lot of developments coming in in terms of, uh, you know, how things are unfolding on the ground at the moment. But right. again, uh, there is there is, uh, there is is no legal uh, update expected overnight. Of course, what happens with Arvind Kejriwal is something that we will have to wait for tomorrow. But the situation on the ground remains very active and a lot of security personnel are therefore present near the Chief Minister's house. Sorry. Absolutely indeed, Dharamjot. Uh, do continue to stay on with us. These are live images that are being beamed straight outside the Delhi Chief Minister's residence. And this, of course, is, is a big moment in India's politics. A sitting Chief Minister of Delhi has now been arrested by the Enforcement Directorate. And what is also important here to point out is that the Enforcement Directorate, in a press note earlier, had described Arvind Kejriwal as a conspirator in the Delhi excise liquor scam. And this is pretty big in, in, in terms of how things have, of course, moved, considering the fact that just a few days ago, the Bharat Rashtra Samiti leader, K. Kavita, had also allegedly conspired with Mr. Kejriwal and the Aam Aadmi Party leaders such as Manish Sisodia and Sanjay Singh while framing the now-scrapped liquor policy case. This is what the Enforcement Directorate had said. And K. Kavita, the daughter of KCR, was also arrested. Now, this is a case that is going to have ramifications in, in terms of how things will, of course, play out politically, considering the manner in which the Aam Aadmi Party has dominated Delhi's politics over the course of the last decade. Ever since the Aam Aadmi Party contested the elections, they managed to sweep the legislative elections here. Although the voters of Delhi have been pretty circumspect in terms of how they've voted, they voted for Kejriwal for Delhi, but for the central government for the seven seats, the Delhi sense to the Lok Sabha, they have, of course, backed the Bharatiya Janata Party. Uh, Dharamjot, considering the timing, you know, the Indian elections are to begin from the 19th of April. Today is, of course, the 21st of March. This is going to have big ramifications in terms of how the narrative of the issue of corruption will play out in these forthcoming elections. Well, of course, Ale, we saw how when uh, Arvind Kejriwal's political career began, it began with the entire movement of anti-corruption, uh, you know, many years ago. And after that, uh, the Aam Aadmi Party, when it was formed, has seen a lot of consistent support in the national capital. But as you mentioned, with the general elections coming up and with how uh, voters in India, especially in the national capital, vote in terms of, you know, uh, party politics and who they pick at the center, that is a very, very interesting dynamic at this point. However, now that uh, the Delhi Chief Minister has been arrested, and especially when the Aam Aadmi Party leaders are quoting and saying that the Chief Minister is beloved in the capital, you know, and he has a mass number of followers, so protests and backlash and a lot of criticism from the voters, from Delhi people, is expected overnight. How that plays out in terms of the psyche of the vote bank is something that will be very interesting to watch in the, in the coming days. Alex?
Jyot Kaur, do continue to stay on with us. Let me, in fact, give our viewers an update in terms of how the Ahmadmi Party is reacting to the fact that Arvind Kejriwal has now been arrested. Saurabh Bharadwaj, a minister in Arvind Kejriwal's cabinet, has now said that there is no plan whatsoever to change the Delhi chief minister or the party chief. He's, in fact, said that Arvind Kejriwal will govern from jail. And that stands by the party has not changed. This is a cabinet minister of Arvind Kejriwal stating that the Ahmadmi party will not replace the chief minister. Instead, we'll have a strange sort of situation where the Ahmadmi party claims that Arvind Kejriwal will continue to govern out from inside of a prison. And my colleague Sidhan Sibyl is still with us. Siddhant, we're looking at these pretty dramatic images where the supporters of Aam Aadmi Party have gathered outside of the residence of the Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal, who is now in the custody of the Enforcement Directorate. You know, give us a sense of how this is likely to play out within the Union territory of Delhi. Delhi is India's national capital, but it also enjoys a very different sort of a political structure from the other states. How is this likely to impact the politics within Delhi? Well, essentially, we will get to know tomorrow. Um, we do expect large-scale protests by the activists. It's going to be a long night, Mohammed. That is given. That is uh, given. Given the fact that a sitting chief minister has been arrested, and uh, he will be spending, it looks like, his night in the jail as well. Uh, Political reactions we expect. How will the other political parties react to something uh, that will be closely watched? Uh, uh, will the India Alliance also react? Uh, uh, we have seen uh, the alliance facing its own contradictions. Uh, but for the opposition, this could be an opportunity to come together under one umbrella, even though the opposition faces the headwinds, headwinds ahead of the elections in terms of their popularity. So will they use uh, this as a card to use the phrase in terms terms of the elections coming is something that will be seen. But above all, the big focus for the AAP party will be how they see this entire development as will they create a, a martyr out of the entire incident, Arvind Kejriwal's incident, or will the ruling party, the BJP party, uh, point out the issue of corruption and make, uh, of course, him as a, a symbol of corruption, someone who fought uh, against corruption or who started his political journey uh, when it comes to fighting or using corruption as a big, big political issue almost 10 years ago. So there are several nuances to the entire development, but all in all, this one moment in Indian politics, in contemporary Indian politics, is going to play uh, in a big way in next few days as India heads towards the general election. <laughs> All right, so this is what the scene is like. There we see the drones which have been used, one assumes, by the Delhi police in a bit to carry out surveillance of the area in terms of the number of people who have gathered. Now, a lot of the Ahmadmi Party supporters, we're given to understand, are still arriving are near the Delhi Cent Chief Minister's residence and this this is a big moment it is a political earthquake and nothing less than that considering that this is happening just a few days after k kavita the daughter of kcr uh, was arrested by the enforcement directorate and then was brought to delhi for hearing uh, questions have also been raised about the hurry as to why was there such a tearing hurry for the ed to arrest arvind kejriwal this is a sentiment that's been echoed by the delhi mayor shelly obroy who said that the matter was anyway in the court 22nd of April had been decided the next day. What was the hurry to arrest Arvind Kejriwal in this, in this time? Now, for people who follow Indian, Indian politics, this is as ironical as it gets. For people who followed the Anna Hazare movement and the role that was played by Arvind Kejriwal in the Anna Hazare movement of India against corruption, Arvind Kejriwal started off as an anti-corruption crusader who wanted to clean up Indian politics. But then he made that decision of entering into politics. And some would say that he had a remarkable success because he became the chief minister in the election that he fought. And he won the election not once but twice as a chief minister. And now Arvind Kejriwal, the sitting chief minister, someone who started off as an anti-corruption crusader, has been arrested by the de by the enforcement directorate in a case of liquor policy excise scam 
Let's in fact listen in to one of the cabinet ministers of Arvind Kejriwal, Atishi Marlena, as to what she's had to say about the arrest and the manner in which the arrest actually was done. Let's listen in. Arvind Kejriwal ji, Delhi ke Mukhya Mantri the, Delhi ke Mukhya Mantri hai, aur Delhi ke Mukhya Mantri rahenge. हमने शुरू से स्पष्ट किया है कि अगर जरूरत पड़ेगी तो अरविंद केजरीवाल जी जेल से सरकार चलाएंगे कोई भी ऐसा कानून नहीं है जो उन्हें जेल से सरकार चलाने से प्रोहिबिट करता है First he flexed his muscle against Russia then he posted photos hitting a punching bag with his biceps bulging flaunting his strength in action he's no other then French President Emmanuel Macron. His pictures came only days after he started taking a harsher line against Russia. With the European elections approaching, the French president has gone from a dove to a hawk. But many have been questioning if the pictures have been enhanced, much like Macron's approach towards the Ukraine war in the face of elections. Or is he simply having a midlife crisis? With sweat dripping from his forehead, an angry expression on his face, and arms reaching out to hit the punching bag, with biceps bulging and veins popping, and all of it in black and white. This is the French president that we are talking about, not Robert De Niro from Raging Bull or an advertisement for Cult Fit. Just take a look at these pictures. Emmanuel Macron seems to be done with his soft boy image. He is now flexing his muscles, both on the internet and politics. The photos were posted on Instagram by the president's photographer, Swazi de la Moissonnière. And when the head of a state puts out a picture, there's always a hidden message. So what's the one here? One cannot help but draw a parallel with Russian President Vladimir Putin. He's a man who wears many hats. He holds a black belt in both judo and karate and is happy to flaunt his skills when requested. He has been seen dribbling a ball on the court, defeating his opponents, be it badminton or ice hockey, riding a horse in the mountains and fishing in a tranquil river in Siberia, both bare-chested by the way. Putin might be what they call a macho, and Macron seems to be following his footsteps. The pictures also remind us what former British Prime Minister Boris Johnson once joked about. He said G7 leaders should strip down, flex their muscles and show they are tougher than Putin. Johnson was being ironic. But Macron seems to have taken it quite literally. So what is he trying to portray? Is he asking Putin to bring it on? Because consider what has happened in the last few days. Macron has transformed from a dove to a hawk, at least in his approach towards the war in Ukraine. The president who has always advocated for peace has now urged NATO not to rule out deploying troops on the ground. He is taking the lead, pushing Europeans to think hard about their security, even about the sacrifices that may soon become necessary. And then comes these pictures giving Macron the edge of a fighter. But this isn't the first time the French president was caught on reel in his gym. Earlier in January, Macron was seen with boxing gloves slung over his shoulders and a punching bag in the background. In this clip, he urged the French to warm up for this summer's Paris Olympics. He said, working out daily is good for health and a lot of other things. Let me tell you, it's also good for his PR campaign. Conveying an image of youth and dynamism, or on the flip side, is Macron simply having a midlife crisis? Throwing himself into a hobby to find some sense of self and gather some validation along the way by posting it on social media. But satirists are doing what they do best. Considering the pictures come after Macron tougher his stance against Russia, they have taken to portray him in military gear leading the French to war. Others are claiming that the photos have been edited to make Macron's muscles appear bigger than they actually are. Is that the case for his newfound hawkish war approach as well? How genuine is the new Macron line? Bureau report, Beyond World is One.